Okay, so here we are. Um, everybody's got their wet food and their lettuce and their real regular water with no medicine in it and they're kicking and screaming and happy as a clam. However, it was the night for medical emergencies last night. Um, I was worried about Hedwig. I have been for several days. Um, the news all really weakened her and she was egg bound. She was, she's been trying to lay an egg for days. So, um, I went and looked at her last night and, you know, she was doing that. She was hard breathing with her tail bouncing up and down and, you know, she's skinny and underweight and weak from the renitazole and probably a little dehydrated and the whole thing. And I was like, okay, this is a disaster. Time to treat her. So, what do you treat a bird with, um, egg, that's egg bound with? And I treat it with this. This is coconut oil with marijuana extract or THC in it. Um, it's an oil, it's in a little dropper bottle, and uh, you put it, it's, it, what, this, what this is is, um, because it's got the marijuana extract in it, um, it's a painkiller, um, it's a muscle relaxer, it's an anti-inflammatory, which are all the things that a female that's egg bound needs in order to get that egg out. She needs to, one, be able to rest. Because um, trying to get an egg out, it's like being in labor. Her, her body is contracting and contracting, and it wears her out, and that will, is what will kill her eventually. Um, also, all the tissues around an egg, the egg inside an egg-bound hen have been pushing and pulling and shoving and contracting for so long that they become inflamed, and they swell up and make it even harder to pass the egg. So she needs the anti-inflammatory. But hugely what she needs is a good night's sleep. Um, so I came out, I washed her all the day yesterday, and she wasn't eating, she wasn't drinking, even her mate wouldn't, she wouldn't eat from her mate anymore, she was just sitting in that box, just huffing and puffing, and I was like, okay, this is, this is getting to emergency level. So the nice thing about the, um, the marijuana is, unlike opiate painkillers, um, it does not slow down the heartbeat, it doesn't drop the blood pressure, it's, you can't OD on it. So basically what I do when I get a hen that's clearly badly egg bound um, is I give her enough to just knock her flat. Um, it's gonna, it stops the contractions. It's also a muscle relaxer. So it stops the contractions, lets her sleep and rest, um, reduces the inflammation so that when she comes back to, she can pass that egg. Um, so I, get, I came out here last night, I gave her some and I came out and checked her again and they become visibly stoned. Um, they, they, they can't stay up on the perches, they kind of wander around on the bottom of the cage, they stand still and they lean off to one side until they're laying down on the bars, and they look like they're drunk. But, um, that's got to be a tremendous relief to a female that's basically been in labor for days, um, to get a break from that. So, uh, I got her going, and, oops, when I came out this morning, we have an egg. Yay, she finally passed it. Um, she's still very, very stoned, but she is, um, so she'll, she'll come and climb out of that nest every once in a while and wander over and eat some of the lettuce leaf or, or some of the millet because she has the munchies, which is exactly what she needs because she hasn't been eating. Um, she's, uh, and then she'll wander back in again. Her mate comes over and talks to her and she kind of looks at him like, huh? And then, you know, goes back in the box. She'll, She'll come out of her cloud later on this afternoon, and by then she ought to be in a lot less pain. So that's a good thing. So, um, this stuff is easy to get. Most medical marijuana de marijuana dispensaries sell it. Um, it's just, you know, an oil. You, you know, you can smoke it, you can put it in your food. But mostly, if you get it in a needle tip bottle, you can treat it, your parakeets with it, if they are in pain, and not worry about accidentally killing them, okay? Um, another medical issue, see this girl up here, um, this looks absolutely horrible because it's got medication on it, but, um, what it is is she's, she's been scratching her head and I treated her with tetracycline because I thought she had, um, an infection of some kind or another and it got it under control until the instant I took her off into tetracycline and then it came back again and I thought, you know, this is probably the Giardia because it makes their heads itch. And she's just scratching really hard. So, um, so 
I, she hadn't been on the ranitazole because I was treating her for this, thinking it was an infection. So um, now she's on ranitazole and the scratching is starting to reduce quite a bit. Um, for, for external injuries, this is uh, a thermazine, silver, silver sulfadiazine cream, 1%. This is actually burn cream. Um, when, uh, when you get a, a burn wound, um, they're highly susceptible to infection, um, and, uh, both, um, bacterial and fungal infection, and you have to keep them moist in order to let them heal. So this burn cream is very soothing, it has an antibacterial in it, and it has an antifungal in it. So, um, no raw skin is going to get infected with anything. So I use, a, um a q-tip to put this on. I got this whole bottle of this stuff on the internet for about 15 bucks. Um, it's 14 ounces and uh, you know it may be years before I run out of it. So she's being treated with burn cream. Okay so um, and you'll see Phantom up here um, because I stopped treating him a few days early because his babies wouldn't eat anything thinking maybe that would help. So I'm going to put him in here with her since I have to retreat her. He's going to get retreated too. And then I can put them both out in the flight cage. So they have, both of them have about four more days of, of the renutazole. And then they'll be good to go. Okay, so now our last medical emergency. I am here to eat my words. These are Matilda and um, Royal's babies. And I came in here this morning, and this little guy right here, who, by the way, this looks absolutely horrible, he is passed out because I got him, I gave him a bunch of the painkiller, uh, so he could be comfortable. Also, his head looks absolutely terrible, but really, she just plucked a bunch of his feathers out of his head, but this is Matilda, she attacked him. I came out this morning, and his wing was stuck in the bars of the cage, and he couldn't move. And um, he was bloody on his head, and Matilda was bloody on her face, so I know it was her. So, the other day I was saying, I don't know, why do you have to take them away from their parents so quickly? Well, it turns out that she will attack them. So, he looks absolutely terrible, but really that's just medication gumming up his feathers. Because she pulled a bunch of feathers out of his head, so his head's kind of raw. But he does have a pretty serious wound right above his nasal cavity she bit through um, so there is one serious wound in there the rest of it is just plucked feathers um, that are all gooey because of medication so he's um, stoned as can be um, and uh, let me tell you I'm gonna put him in here and let him finish resting go ahead sleep baby sleep um, uh, and he's not in any pain right now um, I the like I said it looks much worse than it is just like her um, it's the medication that makes it look like that because her feathers are all gummed up because of the medicine um, but really that's a minor little she scratched herself too much um, and that's uh, you know most of what's going on here is that too but he does have a pretty serious wound right above his nasal cavity um, and I will just see what happens with him. I know how to treat him. If he has the will to live, we'll do it. But right now, I'm just glad to see him resting because he's pretty traumatized. He had, see how his wing's hanging through the bottom of a cage right there between two bars? He had got his wing down there and then turned sideways so that he couldn't pull his wing back out again. Um, and she attacked, apparently she attacked him while he was stuck. Um, so... The whole thing about um, the females will attack the babies after they come out of the nest, I'm, I'm eating my words. I believe that will happen now. Um, now, uh, so a few things to take into account. Um, these babies were, are, are six weeks old now. They got left with their parents for extra time because of the ranitazole and the giardia. And, you know, it was just a struggle the whole way through. Um, so normally they would have been taken away from their parents or separated a little earlier than they have. I t and it seems that the thing that triggered the attack was I actually took the nest box off the cage yesterday because the last baby came out. Um, and that seems to have triggered it. So 
Um, so I'm rethinking this. Um, I, you know, I'm a big believer in fathers staying with babies because he help, they help them once they come out of the nest. But apparently mothers not so much. And it was clearly Matilda because she has blood on her face. You know, this, again, this looks absolutely horrible, but really he didn't bleed down on the bottom of the cage or anything. It's, he's just plucked and then I put medication on him. So, how did I treat him? Aside from knocking him out with, um, with the, um, medical marijuana oil. Got just a drop or two in the beak and he's out like a light and he's feeling no pain and he's allowed to rest. Um, after a highly traumatic morning. So, how did I treat him? Here we are. Um, first of all, whenever somebody's got a wound like that, and you know, it was, it was so icky at first, I couldn't even tell where the wound actually was. You have to clean it with water and saline solution. Um, saline solution, you say, where do you get that? This stuff, Neil Med sinus rinse. It's for putting in those, those bottles, then you squirt it up your nose to clear your sinuses. All it is is saline solution. So I just mix it in the bottle so I get the right mix of water to this and sit by saline solution I mean it's a mixture of salt and baking soda that is equivalent to the amount of salt that you have in your bloodstream and what it does is it first of all it helps clean things and second of all it it makes the contact with the wound less painful than just straight water so um, Neomed sinus rinse all it is is saline solution and you can just mix it the way it says on the bottle I mean the, the way it says on the package and you have a cup full of saline solution then I take q-tips dip them in the sweat saline solution and literally drip it all around the wound until the blood liquefies and starts to roll off so I can see what I'm dealing with so I just dripped it and dripped it got his head all wet and then gently start to clean his feathers um, and across the wound going in the direction that the feathers want to go which is on his head from front to back um, so I cleaned him all up with that and I and discovered that the lion's share of that is not a bad wound but there is one deep cut on there um, and then when I had him pretty cleaned up and this was after I gave him the um, the medical marijuana oil so that he was not feeling much in the way of pain or anything um, and then I put uh, uh, I let the wound was still his head was still wet from the saline solution and I dipped a q-tip in the um, silver sulfadiazine and um, gently kind of mixed it in with the saline solution on his skin to uh, soothe it. It soothes it and helps keep infection at bay. Um, if this little guy decides that he's going to make it, uh, then um, eventually I'll put him back on the tetracycline to make sure he doesn't get an internal infection from that one deeper wound. You cannot put um, external medications on an, on an internal wound. So I'm keeping the outside of it clean and I'm going to watch him for a day or two and if he acts like he wants to live, then I will start, put him on tetracycline in his water to hold infection at bay from the deeper wound while he's healing. So, um, I am going to take the video down the other day where, that I said where I was questioning um, how soon we have to take these guys away. Um, and I'm, I'm rethinking. I, I might go to a place where I'm leaving dads with the babies um, once they start to fledge and pulling the moms out and putting them back in the flight because um, I know these babies need some nurturing um, but in the wild if um, a female wants to drive a chick away she kicks on it and it flies away and stays away from her because it has all the room in the world to run but when you're locked in a cage if mom's trying to drive you away you can't get away so um, so yeah I have never seen this before and Matilda's a great mom so I'm just kind of shocked. But like I said, I'm, I'm never going to not tell you when I make a mistake because that wouldn't be any useful to you at all. So I made a mistake. I should have taken her out sooner. Um, but I, didn't, I really didn't see this coming. I mean, I've, I've, I've had four different couples of birds that literally their babies grew up with them in the cage. And this never happened. So... Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised, but I can't say nobody told me so. Okay, bye-bye.